Christ. We thank our Heavenly Father, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for giving this wonderful opportunity to discuss uh, His wonderful words of life. So, we have been studying uh, many important classes. Uh, so, today we are going to see one uh, prophecy that is mentioned in the book of uh, Revelation. So, let us read uh, Revelation 4, chapter verses 2 and 4. Uh, Master Brother, I think you can read the Bible. Is it okay? Yeah, okay, brother. Okay. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on that throne. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seat I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crown of gold. Very good, brother. Thank you. So here we see that uh, as uh, John behold his vision, he saw, you see, a throne in heaven. The one sat on the throne and uh, in the middle of the throne, you see, there was a four beast uh, and around the throne and around this throne, there were 24, uh, you see, seats uh, and upon which 24 elders uh, sat. So today we are going to see who are these 24 elders. Uh, some people claim that these are the 12 ancient worthies and the 12 apostles, uh, you see. But uh, we can't, uh, you see, uh, uh, accept this uh, interpretation. Why? Because we know very well that none of the ancient worthies have gone to heaven. And uh, is it the apostles if you see? No, not even the apostles. Why? Because here it is given that the seats were around the throne. But what is the thing that is promised to the church? The reward that is promised to the church is that they are going to sit on the throne, same throne with Jesus and Heavenly Father are sitting. So let us read Revelation 3.21, brother. Yes, brother, should I read? Ah, read everything, all the verses you have to read. Okay. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. See, as I have sat with my father in his throne. So he that overcomes will sit in my throne, same throne, not the adjacent 24 thrones. So this can't be either the 12 apostles or the 12 ancient worthies. Because Jesus also clearly said in John 3.13 that no man has ascended to heaven. You see, except... Uh, the son of man who came from heaven. And uh, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.16, we have read this verse several times where Apostle Paul clearly says, the church will be resurrected first at the second coming of Jesus. So, if the resurrection happens at the second coming of Jesus, before this one, how can somebody go to heaven and sit on this throne? But definitely, it's not possible. Then who are these 24 elders? So, where do we find the answer? For the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. See, the answer is given clearly, you see, in Revelation 5th chapter. You see, in Revelation 5th chapter, you see, uh, there is a vision that is shown where a uh, father, Heavenly Father is sitting on the throne, having a scroll in his hand, it is completely sealed with seven seals. You see, and uh, nobody was able to open that seal. Uh, and uh, nobody was found worthy. And as soon as uh, John heard this one, he began to weep. Then one elder comes and encourages John saying, don't need to worry. Because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb of God, Jesus Christ is found worthy to open the scroll. So read with us. Revelation 5th chapter verses 1, 2, 3 and 4. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I was, and I saw a strong angel, angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seal thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was worthy, found worthy to open and to read the book, neither there to look thereon. Very good, brother. So... So nobody was found worthy. Then what happened, brother? Continue, brother. Huh. And one of the elders said unto me, Wipe not, 
Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Very good. So the lion of the tribe of Judah, you see, has uh, huh, found worthy to open. Now who comes and tells these words? If you see, it is an elder. Okay. Now an elder came and told about Jesus. But did he directly mention about Jesus? No. Rather, that elder was quoting a prophecy that is already mentioned in the Old Testament. So where is the prophecy where Jesus is mentioned as a line of the tribe of Judah? Genesis 49, 9 and 10, brother. Genesis 49, chapter 9 and 10. Uh -huh. Okay, brother. Genesis 49, chapter 9 and 10. Okay. Okay, it's written like this on Genesis 49, chapter 9 and 10. Judah is a lion. Lions will from the pre my son. Do art gone up. He stood down. He calls as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. The script shall not depart from Judah. Nor a lawyer giver, lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes and unto him shall the great, great ring, a gathering of the people be. Very good, brother. See, here it's clearly mentioned that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That means it is a prophecy that is mentioned in the Old Testament that is quoted here. That means elder doesn't come and speak his own words, sir. So, he is quoting the prophecy. And who is this elder? This elder cannot be any human being. So, the clear proof is given here itself. The elder comes and gives his own testimony about the Bible prophecy. Hence, uh, these 24 elders are 24 important prophecies. Therefore, the word elder is used. Elder means what? Very important. You see, and very senior most, that means what? Uh, very, very important prophecies, uh, prominent prophecies, uh, you see, in the Bible. And uh, actually they were sitting in the throne means what? Uh, they were waiting for the fulfillment. Once the fulfillment of the promise came, they came before the throne. You see, they kept the crown and... Uh, knelt before God. Uh, that means uh, whenever the prophecies are fulfilled, it brings glory to God. You see, it brings, uh, you see, homage and respect uh, and honor to God. Uh, and it is around the throne means what? This is something related to the kingship uh, who is on the throne. That means something related to God and God's kingdom. Therefore, these 24 prophecies are 24 important prophecies of the Bible related to God's kingdom. Now, what is given in the Bible? Read, brother. Acts 3.21, brother. Acts 3.21. Uh. Okay, brother. Acts 3.21. Uh. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of resituation of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Uh -huh. what, uh, what the prophets have spoken? The times of restitution of all things. That means in God's kingdom, how everything is going to be restored. Back to normal. That is what God has spoken through all the prophets. Brother. Underline these words, Muslim brother, because the entire Bible is speaking about God's kingdom which today is not spoken in any of the churches. It says the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken from the beginning of the world through all his holy prophets. That means all the prophecies are related to God's kingdom. So the 24 uh, elders, uh, you see, uh, means uh, 24 important prophecies. Wearing white robes means what? Uh, the truthfulness, you see. The definite fulfillment of these prophecies that it is not lie, it is definitely truly going to happen. You see, as I told, sitting means waiting. So fell down before 
uh, God's throne means what? Uh, you see, catching the crown means uh, uh, fulfillment of the prophecy which brings glory to God. Now, let us read these 24 prophecies. Which are these 24 prophecies? Okay. First prophecy is uh, given in Jude 14. Jude, you see, verse uh, 14, brother. New Testament before Revelation, Jude 14, brother. Huh? Okay, brother. Mm. Uh, and I, I, and Hanok also, the seventh from Adam, prof, prof, prophesies of this, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints. Very good. You see, who prophesied? The first prophet, Enoch, the seventh man from Adam, he himself uh, prophesies, saying, you see that uh, what will happen, it seems, uh, Jesus' second coming will happen, it seems. Uh, so, the seventh man from Adam himself prophesied about Jesus' second coming, the purpose of his second coming, that he is going to come with 10,000 of his saints, 1,44,000. Why? To judge the earth. So, 1,000 years is going to be a period of judgment. The whole world will be judged. This is the first prophecy, not prophets. Remember, brother, this is not speaking of the prophets. Prophecy. So 24 elders means 24 prophecies. This is the first prophecy. Okay. Now, second prophecy, already we read Genesis 49, chapter 9 and 10. Judah is a lion whelp. You see, huh? and uh, it says, uh, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Until Shiloh comes. Shiloh means what? Prince of Peace. And unto him shall be the gathering of the people. The whole world shall be gathered to Jesus. You see, the lion of the tribe of Judah at Jesus' second coming. Let us read the third prophecy. Deuteronomy 18.15, brother. Okay, brother. The Lord... The God will raise you, raise up unto the a prophet from prophet from the midst of the of the brethren like unto me, unto him he shall hearken. Very good. You see, here Moses is telling that the Lord God will raise a prophet like unto me, midst of thy brethren. So who is this prophet? You see. The Islam uh, people believe that uh, Moses spoke about a prophet, uh, that is Jesus, and Jesus spoke about a prophet, uh, that means that is, uh, you see, Muhammad the prophet. No, no, no. Actually, what Moses was trying to say, that a prophet is going to be raised among your people, you see, from the brethren, and uh, him shall all the people listen. Who is the prophet? This prophet is none other than the Jesus head and the body. Remember the class of the seed of the woman? Jesus is the head of that, uh, you see, seed of the woman and the body members of the church. Uh, you see, this head and the body is the prophet which the entire world of mankind has to listen in thousand years. Uh, you see, so this is speaking about Christ the kingdom, Christ's uh, cabinet ministers. Okay, the fourth prophecy. 2nd Samuel 7.13, brother. 2nd Samuel 7.13. Yeah. Yeah, it's written like this. Uh... He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish, I will, I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Very good. See, he shall build a house for my name. Jesus shall build a house for God's name, and God shall establish his throne. You see, his kingdom forever. We all know this uh, temple. Is the antitypical temple, the church along with Jesus Christ, uh, you see, which is going to be 
completed you see in the thousand years where all the world will be able to approach god in his kingdom okay next fifth prophecy is job 19 chapter 25 to 26 brother job 19 25 to 26 okay brother okay it's written like this for i know that my re redeemer live and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and though after my sins worms destroy this body yet in my flesh shall i see god brother very good so here we all know very well it's speaking of the resurrection that is going to happen in Christ's kingdom. You see? Huh? My Redeemer liveth in the later day, in the last day, in his thousand years, uh, he shall stand and rule upon this earth. And then what will happen? Though my skin, my flesh is totally destroyed uh, by the worms uh, as they put in the grave, you see, God will give a new body for all the people who are resurrected uh, in Christ's kingdom. You see, everybody will be given a good opportunity. A new body will be given to each and every person. Okay. Next prophecy. Psalms chapter 30 verse 5. Uh, yeah. For his anger endures but a moment. In his favor is life, weeping my indoor for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Uh -huh. You see, this is again speaking about God's kingdom. His anger, which is for a period of 6,000 years, is compared to a moment. But God's favor, you see, which is going to be eternal, eternal, eternal to eternal, eternity. You see, you see, that is going to be huh? forever and ever. So God will give you see, special favor. Now, whatever weeping is there, it is only for the period of six hours in the night, where sin, sorrow is there. Joy comes when the morning, Jesus' second coming. See, already we are in the millennium morning. You see, the blessings have started to flow, but you see, this will keep on increasing. The enlightenment, which is for the whole world, is increasing day by day. You see? Okay, this is the sixth prophecy. Now, seventh one. Proverbs 8 chapter. 22 and uh, verse 30. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his work of old. Then I was then I was I was by him as one brought off with him and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him. Ah, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways. He is the beginning of God's creation, dear brethren. You see, first creation which God ever decided to create it was Jesus. And through Jesus only, rest of all the things, all the other creations have been created. So, he is the main theme and main key for God's kingdom. You see, therefore we did in the Bible now, God so loved the world that he gave his son. So, Jesus, if Jesus is not there, nothing is there. And he was God's daily Delight. Okay. Now, 8th prophecy, Isaiah 35th chapter 8 to 10. Okay, brother. Isaiah 35 chapter 8 to 10. It's written like this, and an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring man, though fools shall not reign therein. Ah, oh, this is speaking about the highway. We studied about three-way class, you remember, brother? Broadway, yes, narrow way, 
isn't it so all the people are walking in broad way so only those who follow the footsteps of jesus escape from the broad way and come to the narrow way but what about the rest of mankind is there no other way for escape or salvation for them there is a way that is the i way there shall be a way a highway of holiness even the fool shall not make a mistake in it it seems so many people don't believe in god but in christ kingdom it will be so clear that nobody will be making a mistake of not believing god in his kingdom then continue brother ha huh? no lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up there on it shall not be found there but the redeem redeem shall walk there very good uh, no lion shall be there this is not a literal lion because literal lion will eat straw in christ kingdom this lion is what uh, who is our adversary uh, lion means like uh, it is defined as uh, mm -hmm. the character of lion correct satan correct no yeah. satan is compared to lion in the bible no yeah somewhere mm -hmm. lion also somewhere christ himself god also yes but here lion shall be not found means what jesus will be there church will be there christ will be there but yeah. is uh, satan will be there in thousand years satan will be kept out, outside maybe yes. yeah that is the lion that will be not there in a thousand years yeah and who will be there continue uh and the ransomed of the lord shall return and some and come to see one with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads the they ranch. shall obtain, mm, mm. they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and singing shall flee away mm. the ransomed of the lord shall return jesus gave a ransom for all all mankind shall return okay so this is also speaking about christ kingdom so ninth prophecy jeremiah 31st chapter verse 29 and 30 Jeremiah 31, 31, 29. 30, yes, brother. In those days they shall say no more. The father have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eats the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Very good. So in Christ's kingdom, everybody shall die for his own sins. Not like now. Fathers have ate the sour grape. The children's teeth are set on the edge. Father Adam ate the forbidden fruit. Correct, no brother? Yeah. So he received the death penalty. But uh, What did God do? That death penalty was passed upon all of us. Correct, no? Yes. Yes. So that is what is mentioned here. But in Christ's kingdom, nobody will die for other sin. They will die for their own sins. So it will be an individual judgment. Good. This is ninth prophecy. The tenth prophecy, Ezekiel twenty-first chapter, twenty-six and twenty-seven. Mm. Yeah, it's written like this. Uh, the the thoughts said the Lord God, remove the dead. Dadam, Dadam, remove the Dadam and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low, and abase him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. Uh huh. So take off the crown means what? Kingship. God's kingdom was typically established in Israel. Now God is telling to the last wicked king, take off this one. His kingdom shall be removed from Israel. But whom shall God again give back this kingdom? It says until he comes 
who's right it is correct now now who is the rightful king for god's kingdom 180 one ah. 64 no no who is the rightful king for god's kingdom who is the king in god's kingdom jesus christ very good so jesus christ will be given the kingdom at what this was says okay 11 prophecy daniel 12 12 Daniel hmm. Blessed is he that wait, wait and come to the thousand, three thousand and five and thirty days. Very good. Blessed is he that waiteth and come for thousand three thirty five days. This is we are read in uh, Jesus' second coming. Correct now, brother? Yes. So, thousand three thirty five days from five thirty nine brings to which date? Eighteen. 74. Very good. So what happened in 1874? Jesus came already. Very good. That is the blessed thing. Very good. 12th prophecy. Hosea 7 chapter 8 and 11. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not torn. Ephraim also is, a, is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt. They go to Assyria. Ah, see, here actually this is speaking about the great multitude. Again in Revelation 7 chapter, great multitude is mentioned, no, the prophecy. That also, yeah. if you read, there also elder comes and gives the reply. Who is these people who are with the white robes? Elder comes and answers. These are a great multitude. This is the prophecy about the great multitude. See, it says, Ephraim has mixed with the people. Who are these people? God's children, after learning the truth, after understanding the truth, they have to leave Babylon. We studied about Babylon, no? Last few weeks we studied, no? So, we need to quit Babylon. But here it says, Ephraim, they are mixed with both the people. You say, what did Jesus say? You can't serve two masters, isn't it? Or else you will be pleasing one, displeasing the other. And uh, Ephraim is a cake not turned. That means roti. You see? If you cook a roti only on one side, if you don't cook on the other side, can we eat brother? No. Ah, these are the people who 50-50. This way also, that way also. No, we need to take decision. Either be this way or either be that way. You see, therefore it's called as a silly dove. Dove means what? A sign of purity, Holy Spirit. Huh? But they are silly dove means what? They don't, they don't have the strength, the confidence. You see, courage to stand for the truth. They are very fickle-minded. Without heart. Without understanding. They go to Egypt. Egypt means what? World. You see? So this is speaking about a great multitude. Okay. 13th verse. Uh, prophecy. Joel 2nd chapter, brother. 28 and 29, brother. Okay, brother. It And it shall come to pass after afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your son and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old man shall dream dreams. Your young man shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days in those will I pour days. out my spirit. Very good. Here is speaking about God's Holy Spirit. Now God's Holy Spirit is poured only upon his servants, the church, who are able to see and understand God's truth from the Bible. Who are able to see the visions which are in the Bible, understand his meaning. But in Christ's kingdom, when this Holy Spirit will be poured upon all flesh, you see, they will become the sons and daughters of God. So again, he is speaking about Christ kingdom. Okay, 14 prophecy. Amos 9 chapter 13 and 14. Okay, brother. Behold the days come, said the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the traders of grapes him that sowed seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine and the hills shall meet melt and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel and they shall build the west cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them uh -huh. see here it says uh, I shall bring away the captivity of my people here a prophecy about the days to come, the last days. 
what will happen israel shall be gathered israel shall be rebuilt israel shall plant gardens today we have seen the subject of israel how this prophecy is fulfilled but here one important thing tells in verse 13 the plowman shall overtake the reaper now who is the plowman you can see in the photo the plowman is the one who plows the field which is very hard and makes it loose to receive the seed the reaper is the one who does the harvest isn't it so the plowman will overtake the reaper means what reaping will be going on harvest work will be going on but the plowman the great uh, time of trouble which breaks everybody's heart makes it loose to receive god's word already that work is poor you see in progress that's what we can see today you see harvest work the truth is going reaching out all the places many people are coming out of babylon but at the simultaneously what is happening you see uh, the great time of trouble all the frictions the problems in the world are coming now itself why because this is the time we are living where israel is being gathered israel is being rebuilt fulfillment of prophecies about god's kingdom okay 15 prophecy obadia 21 obadia 21 okay brother obadia 21 and save yourself come upon mount sion of sion to judge the mount of yesu and the kingdom shall be the lords kingdom shall be the lords savior shall come who is the saviors jesus and the lack and 44000 kingdom shall be the lords uh, good 16 prophecy yes brother uh, tell me any question yeah not i got it okay jona 4 chapter verse 10 and 11 okay jona 4 10 and 11 hmm. then said the lord do had had pity on the god for which do has not labored neither made it grow which came off in a night and perish in a night and soon not i spear nevens nineve a soon not i spear nineve the great that great city wherein are more than six score thousand person that cannot this discern between their right hand and their left hand and also most cattle you see yeah god is uh, indirectly you see uh, correcting jonah because jonah was very angry that god uh, repented uh, destruction of nineveh and saved nineveh and god mentions you see you are much worried about a small uh, a god plant uh, that gave shelter to you only for a few minutes and it died away you did nothing for it it perished it came by itself it died by itself you should so much worried about that one why should i not be worried about the people who don't know who are not able to discern between left hand or right hand this is again speaking about the god's mentality god's heart god's feelings how god thinks about the whole world you see the people don't know about the right hand and the left hand many people today in the world are innocent and sin without any understanding dear brethren you see in christ kingdom they will all be blessed so this is the 16th prophecy the 17th prophecy mika 4 chapter verses 1 2 and 3 mika 4 chapter verse 1 and 3 is written like this but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be ex- exalted above the hills and people shall follow unto it and many nations shall come and say come and let us go up to the mountains of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and he, we will walk in his path for the law shall go forth of sion and the word of the lord from jerusalem and he shall judge among many people and rebuke a strong nation of of our of and they shall beat their swords into all polosers and their spears into prognins hooks and nation shall not lift up a sword against nation neither against nation neither shall they learn away any more na ah, neither shall they learn war any more imagine in christ kingdom they should not be war at all 
Today, so much of funds have been poured to war. Imagine, Ukraine, Russia, fighting is going on for more than one year. You see, Gaza is totally destroyed. How much of funds? But in Christ's kingdom, they shall be diverted to cultivation. Therefore, it says, so you see, they shall beat their swords into plowshares. All the investment today, what is going for arms and ammunition? In Christ's kingdom, we should go for cultivation. The whole world should be blessed with sufficient effort. This is again speaking about Christ kingdom. Okay, 18th prophecy, Nahum 115, brother. Okay, brother, Nahum 1, verse 15. Behold, upon the mountains, the feet of him that bring good tidings, tidings that publish peace. O Judah, keep the solemn feast. Perform the vows, for the weak shall not more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. You see? Ah, the mama. Behold, upon the mountain, the feet of him that begin the ah, good tidings. This is actually a totally this is symbolic prophecy. Mountain means God's kingdom. The feet of him means what? We are the feet classings of Jesus Christ. We are bringing the good tidings of peace on this kingdom. In this world, we are publishing the good news of the kingdom. You see. So this is again speaking about the church activity along with Jesus in this mountain. Okay, 19 prophecy, Habakkuk 2.14. Habakkuk 2 verse 14 is written like this. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water fill the sea. You see, in Christ's kingdom, the entire world will be filled with God's knowledge. There will be none who will be innocent of God's knowledge. Everybody will have understanding. As the water is completely covered in the sea. There is no place in the sea where there is no without water. Every place is completely covered with water. Same way it will be in Christ's kingdom. Okay. 20th prophecy. Zephaniah 3rd chapter 8 and 9. Therefore, wait you upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the pre, for my determination is to gather the nation that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. Indi even all my first anger for all the earth shall be devoured, devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn off the people of pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. You see? So what will happen? How kingdom shall be established? First God will pour out his indignation. In the great time of trouble it will be totally destroyed. You see, all this evil system will be destroyed, not the people. Then, God will turn a pure language. What is a pure language? The language of love. You see, now the language of the world is selfishness. But God will turn a pure language. So, they may call out God with one consent. They may all worship only one true God with one heart. This is going to happen in Christ's kingdom. So, 21st prophecy, Haggai, 2nd chapter, verse 6 and 7. First, for thus said the Lord of hosts, at once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill him, I will fill this house with glory, say the Lord of hosts. Mm. You see, before Christ is going to fill his house with glory, what will happen? He will shake the heaven and the earth. What is this heaven and the earth? You see, the invisible rulership, the Satan's rulership under the earth atmosphere. And on the earth means what? The evil and wicked politicians ruling in this world. This corrupt system in this world shall be shaken. You see, shaken in such a way that desire of nations shall come. So everybody will desire peace, harmony instead of all this war and all these things. You see, then God shall... Fill his glory in his house, the church. Okay, this is the 21st prophecy. 22nd prophecy, Zechariah 6, chapter 12 and 13. And speak unto him, saying, Thoughts speaking the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne 
and he shall be the priest he be a priest upon his throne and the council of peace shall be between them both so see here also it's clearly mentioned uh, that uh, behold a branch shall sprout you see that means this is speaking about jesus christ how he shall have a small beginning but uh, he is going to sit upon the throne of the lord and rule it seems sir. how he is going to be a priest upon the throne remember melchizedek he was a priest as well as a king the uh, king yeah. of salem melchizedek similarly jesus is going to be like melchizedek sit on the throne and be priest and king judge and rule then what will happen the peace shall be there okay 23rd prophecy malachi 3rd chapter 17th verse okay brother malachi 3rd verse 17 is written like this and they shall be mine say the lord of hosts in that day when i make up my jewels and i will spare them as a man spared his own son that saved him hmm. This is like, uh, speaking about uh, how God will have mercy upon the church. You see? Yeah. Uh, they shall be mine. Oh, the church shall be my God's. Uh, you see? Uh, when they, in the day which God makes his jewels, uh, the precious things. Uh, you see? The death of the saints is precious in God's sight. Uh, this is the precious most thing which God likes. And God is going to spare the church. In the great time of trouble. Okay. The last prophecy is given in New Testament told by John the Baptist. John 1 29. Okay, but the last chapter I will read from the Bible. John verse 1 29. Yeah, it is written like this. Uh, the next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who is taken away the sin of the world. Ah, behold the Lamb of God, who is taken away the sins of the world. You see, Jesus is the Lamb who takes the sins of the whole world and gives salvation for the whole world. This is the last of the prophecy. So, these 24 prophecies are the 24 elders which are very, very important prophecies related to God's kingdom. 